actually really filming for ages. Well, I've been filming little clips for like another reading vlog, but actual filming. I've uh, decided to jump back in. So, first off, in my new uni house, which is actually really nice. So, my room is the biggest room. I looked out, I think, well, when we chose our house, like, we all knew what room we wanted. There was no arguments, but mine is like a few pound more a week. I literally like, I think it's like two pound more than the others, but I'm really happy. Like, I mean, start with, look at this wall, like, feature wall in the uni house in a decent colour, like, so nice. Anyway, I am now Lynn. Oh, so I decided I'm gonna do a top tips for first year students. So I have my notes because, well, I, I, I just get stuck. I would get stuck. So if I'm looking down, they're here. I'm gonna try not to rattle the paper because we don't want that. <laughs> so tip number one is to make friends with your housemates. So I looked out last year and like I had two amazing housemates. One I'm moving with again this year and the other is like still one of my good friends. So yeah, I'll be around theirs all the time because one of my other good friends is in there as well in that house and they're just down the road. So that's cool. So that meant that like we're all happy to be in the kitchen together. We had talk. There'd be nights where like we had a street group chat and there'd be like drama going off in it and we'd just be knocking on each other. So I was like, have you seen it? Have you seen the group chat? So that's really nice. <laughs> so tip number two is make your room cozy. Like I'm so proud of my first year room. I'm trying to think if I've got any videos of it. Don't think I did, but I'm so proud of my first year room. Like, I spent so much time in there. <laughs> One, because my degree being English lit, like, we have minimum contact hours and maximum sit and read. Just sit and read and research. <laughs> so I spent so much time in my room. But also, so we didn't have like a common room or a social space in our first year house. And it meant that, well, where did you go? So like, if we wanted the film night, we had it in my room because I had a TV and I was happy to host. But it meant that like, we used the blankets, we used the cushions, the fairy lights properly came in cosy. Like, it was just so nice, especially in winter time when you've got your fairy lights and you've got a little blanket, hot chocolate, dairy free of course. <laughs> hot chocolate and you're just chilling watching a film it's great tip number three is buy a large drying area so you know the things that like you put up in your room that you dry clothing on buy one they are like i think they're like nine quid nine ten pounds in like asda dunelm sainsbury's they're really cheap don't get an over the radiator one because it's not enough room. You won't be able to dry anything on it. But what it did mean for me is that on every wash I just washed my clothes in, I dried it all on an error and didn't have to pay for the tumble dryers. The only time I paid for the tumble dryers was when I was in my bedding because I wanted to like double bed in. I wanted it to all be dry. Um, That's another thing. I had to double bed in. But I was in a single bed because it meant I could wrap myself up and also this year this is a double bed I've not had to buy new bedding or a new duvet so that saved money because when I worked last year I paid a tiny bit more but now I don't have to buy any more this year if that makes sense but anyway yeah buy an error you save so much money I think it's it's either £2.40 for a wash or £2.60 for a wash but then it's whichever one it isn't, it's that for a dry, so the £2.40 or £2.60 to dry your clothes. And they are massive tumble dryers. 
And so like, it makes sense if you're doing your bedding and your towels and your clothes, but it doesn't make sense for like, your week's washing. Just buy an error, please, for the love of God. <laughs> Something number four, meal plan. Like, I, did I do this from the start? I think I did do it from the start of the term. So right now, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in like a notebook, so I have it in a bullet journal, but in a notebook and write what you're going to eat on every day. So lunch and dinner. So you write what you're going to have if you're in a lecture, maybe. I mean, I had a lecture 12 to 1. Let me think this right. Yeah, so on a Wednesday, I had a seminar, 9 to 11, and a lecture 12 to 1. So I had an hour to have my lunch unless I wanted a snack, and then have my lunch after my lecture. But that meant that, like, those days I planned to have, like, soup or something that was from the night before that I could reheat. So it just meant that I knew what to eat in. But it also means you're less likely to buy a takeaway, because you're like, oh, I don't want to have the tea, or oh, I can't bother to cook. But you've already got the food in, you already know what you're going to eat. It also means that you can like get excited about meals that are coming. So like maybe put a certain meal on a night that like you know you've got a really hot day at uni and so you get back and you're like, oh yeah, that's my tea. And it also means when you go shopping, I'll do a little, I'm not saving money. Please don't go shopping or else. So like when you go shopping and you're saving your money anyway save money only buy what you need five explore the city like if you've moved cities become a tourist explore it like it wasn't until halfway from my year i discovered i lived across from a country park like it took me a five minute walk to get to the country park basically and it's amazing like i love walking there it's literally the best but then this year, because of the eat out the help out things, me and my roommates went to a taco place that we only just discovered. Like, I'm oh my god, so good. But like, be a tourist, try new things, explore things. Don't like, find a restaurant you like and then go there every time you want a restaurant. Try new ones, if you don't like it, too bad, don't go there again. <laughs> like, be a tourist, because if you've moved, you wanna like, get to know places and find the best places. It also means when your friends visit you can be like we're going here, here and here because these are the best places. <laughs> Number six. So if you have face-to-face -face seminars and lectures this year, which depend on what your uni's doing, take snacks. So I always had like a snack bar in my bag because in our seminars we got breaks and even though I'd only had my breakfast like an hour before I was hungry and it just meant that my stomach wasn't rumbling and I could have had the snack and it also meant that like if I wasn't having it and one of my friends was like their stomach was rumbling I could be like I have like a snack bar do you want it and it just meant that yeah it made the lectures so much easier and also meant that you're able to get through it because you have like the energy to and you can contribute more to your lecture or seminar and get way more out of it than thinking oh I'm hungry like you're actually thinking about what you're discussing. <laughs> Number seven, so join societies. I joined two at the start of the year. I was just Marvel and English. I think I went to like two English meetings and then decided it wasn't for me. But Marvel was really good. We watched Marvel films and played board games and just when we play board games, we have Marvel music coming in the background. It was great. So, like, if those are still going this year with COVID and stuff, I will be going back to Marvel. It's top tier. <laughs> Alright, so, number eight is University of Chester specific. So, like, I mean, I guess it might apply for, like, other unis. But, if you know you're going to the zoo, buy a membership so I didn't buy like the freshest tickets because I don't go out drinking so I was like I'm not paying like 30 40 quid to get access to all the clubs I'll save my money and 
put like that money towards a membership. So my Zoom membership for the year cost me £85. So that means that I can get it for free until I think it's late September this year. Although they might have added a few months on because of the COVID like closures. But it just means that like I don't have to pay every time I wanted to get. It also means if you're a disabled student allowance a student, take your DSA approval letter with you or have it on your phone when you sign up for the membership and you get a little like plus symbol on your card and it means you either get a carer or just another person in with you for free and they don't have to pay but it also means if you sign up for a direct debit then you get it £10 cheaper than next year so I think it's going to be £75 this coming year which is great so just do it honestly best thing but only do it if you know you go into the zoo often because I get it's expensive but it's a lot cheaper than paying for a ticket each time. I think three times, if you know you go to the zoo three times in a year, it makes it worthwhile because it could be up to £30 a ticket each time to get into the Chester Zoo. So that comes to £90 and I paid £85 for a year. Right, number nine. And this is like, this is what I hate about panicking about first year uni and what. I was so scared about is that don't be scared if like you don't like freshers and don't be scared that you think that's what it's always going to be like i hated freshers like hated it i was on the phone to my mom like crying like i've got no friends i can't do this i'm lonely because i don't go out drinking so like i said i didn't pay for that membership not membership what was it like wristband or whatever to get into all the clubs and you couldn't get into the clubs anyway drinks were so expensive i was like i'm not doing it i'm not wasting my money if i don't want to do it but it also meant that like people were going out every night and then were too hungover to like get up and do stuff in the day and you didn't know that many people and so i think what did i do in fresh i went mini golf with some of my friends um we went to a pizza place and uh, the one thing, and this is how I met all my friends that are like, I'm friends with now, was our house hosted like a house party. Although you can't do that this year because of COVID. But <laughs> we hosted a house party and like almost everyone from the street came. It was, it was chaotic. Um, but like, I met like some of my best uni friends there. Just by like, being like, before everyone goes out, do they want to come around? And then I literally went, we had the house party, I went to Spoons, and then I came home. I was like, I'm not going Rosie's. No one wants to go Rosie's. Not with that entry fee. No. <laughs> but yeah, so do not worry if you hate freshers, because I hated freshers. And now, like, I love uni. The few weeks after, like, I was going pumpkin pig with my mates. It was, it was all good afterwards. <laughs> and then, final tip, we're almost there. So tip number 10 is when you're doing an essay, create a timeline for it. So what I mean by that is like a big sheet of A3 and write the start date of when you're going to start writing your essay and not the due date, but like three days before. So you finish your essay before the due date and then section it into like 250 words, 500 words to like the key points you're going to do. And it just means that like you're on track for your essay, you're not worried about falling behind, you know how much time you've got left, you know how much you've done. I used to put mine up on my wall so I could always see it. But it also means that like you feel like you're progressing and you know how much you've done and you've got time for like the finishing touches. And for me that was always like adding page numbers on, making sure that the format was right, adding names and stuff at the top making sure my bibliography was complete and my references were all correct. So it just meant that like everything was done a few days before I could submit it and whilst everyone else was panicking about last minute essays, I was like, I'm good, I'm good. I mean, I submitted it early like a good few times. I mean, there were times where I was like the day I submitted it, but I'd been writing it for weeks beforehand, so I was still fine. 
so just kind of plan ahead so that's all the 10 tips I'm actually actually pretty pleased with them it took me a while to think of 10 of them but I didn't want like the basic ones like oh do this make sure you bring this I kind of wanted the ones that I would have wanted going into fresh and first year because like I say I hated freshers and I haven't spoken to someone or like seen anyone who was like oh yeah freshers is rubbish like I know everyone's like oh it's not the best week of uni but for me I've never heard anyone say they hate it so like just know if you hate it that's okay if you love it great but if you hate it like it does get better after a week you just have to push for it <laughs> so that's it for today so thank you for watching maybe maybe give it a like just maybe just an idea i mean comment if you want but i can't really force you kind of no no i can't and then currently as i'm filming this i have two subscribers i am buzzing like two people who get to watch this like hi please subscribe please watch my videos Bye.